There I was 13 years old. I'm sitting in math class, grade 8. Anybody ever been to grade 8? <laughs> yeah. I had that permanent confused look on my face. I had this math teacher, his name's Mr. Kelly. And he used to stand behind me, just kind of heavy breathing, as I'm trying to work out a problem, trying to solve an equation. And he would give me his words of wisdom. He would say, you are Marcus. Now, don't try to look at the problem for the answer. Look within the problem to get the answer. I used to look at him and smile. What the hell was he talking about? <laughs> but he had this equation on the board, and it was 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 equals. One. See, I failed, but you guys are good. <laughs> you guys are good. It equals 1. And he told us that no matter how many times you multiply that digit against itself, you just get 1. Now, I had no idea that that would become a very significant thing in my life. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is the last speaker. He's going to teach us about math. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. You see, I think that we're all sitting out there. This is what I believe. And we might be thinking that we have to sooner or later add our lives up to be something. Am I right? Okay, three of you are with me. Four. Have I got five? That's so good. Okay, so that's a mistake. It's not about adding things up. It's about multiplying in life because the definition of multiplication is to grow. Am I right? We all have things in our past, and if we try to add them up, many of us would not be happy. Am I right again? Somebody, <laughs> I've got a past, and I'm going to share the story with you in hopes that you look at this and realize there is a way to take all of that and be happy with all of this. In 1981, I became a male exotic dancer. You remember? One other person go, did he say dancer? Uh, stripper. Okay, well, back then, I was good looking. I was young. I was very muscular. Not that different than what you see now. <laughs> I had it made. In fact, I became Mr. Nude North America. Between Canada and the United States, I was number one male stripper. I was on top of the world. Everything was happening for me. Money, girls, lots of them. I had everything going for me. What could possibly go wrong? I was on top of the world, wasn't I? Wasn't I having the greatest life? Or was I? If you take far too much sex, believe it or not, far too much alcohol, mix that a little bit, with some great steroids, you can take any young man and turn him into an absolute monster. One night, at about 2 a.m., I decided to drive home in my Corvette from Kelowna, from a gig I just did, to come home to Vancouver. I was so ashamed at that point, six years in, at everything that I had done it was making me sick inside that I was heading down that highway and I got that car up to about 180 miles an hour and then I just decided to turn it into the cement wall. Now, I thought that would be the end of it. I'm 27 years old and I was perfectly happy to just end it all because it had just been too much, too much pressure. Instead, that car hit that cement and flew up in the air. I was an astronaut for a couple of seconds. <laughs> and it flew over and landed on its side. Then it did that tumbling thing you see in the movies. It's not that exciting when you're in the car. 
And then it slid on the roof doing this all the way down the highway. The T-tops in the Corvette, you know, you ever seen those plug in? They were gone. The doors, gone. The paint job, well, it was gone. It came to a stop in the middle of the highway and dug itself into the dirt, just outside of hope. I was coupled over with my seatbelt snapped in. It was just a lap belt. You didn't have the harness back then. I went to reach for that belt as I felt the heat from the flames. The car had caught fire. And you all know a Corvette is fiberglass. They go up pretty fast. I could smell the oil. The smoke was coming into my lungs and burning. As I reached for the seatbelt, I realized my legs were actually pinned under the dash and the uh, steering wheel. So I wasn't going anywhere. So what I did is I just gave up. I figured that was my fate for everything that I had done. It was a just end. I passed out. The next thing I know, I am being pulled out of that car by a man who's holding me by the shoulders. And when I looked up, he's wearing a black suit with a white collar. This is going to be hard to believe, but this is the truth. I was looking up at a priest. My first words were, oh my God. <laughs> he said, no, son. <laughs> Just one of his helpers. <laughs> I said, am I dead? He said, no. But you gave it a hell of a try. I realized after that day that something had to change in me. But I didn't know how to do it. In fact, just a few years later, I got this tattoo. It runs all the way down here. It's a tiger tearing apart a pocket watch that's on the 11th hour. My accident was the 11th month, the 11th day. Now, I didn't know how to change, so what I did is I just plunged on with life like we all do, right? We just keep going. But I managed to destroy three marriages and fumble my way through raising four daughters. And I mean fumble. Three years ago is when it actually changed. Three years ago, I was asked to be a chaperone at my youngest daughter's camp out for grade seven. You ever been a chaperone? It's a really tough job. I decided that I'm going to start writing everything down at this camp because I get up at 4.30 in the morning. The kids don't get up till 7. So I start writing a book. And I figure I'll put every bad thing in this book and that'll just help me along. On the fourth day, my little girl gets up early and comes and finds me. I'm on the balcony at the cookhouse and I'm writing all this horrible stuff in this book. I quickly close it. She comes up and says, Dad, what are you writing? I said, well, I'm, I'm actually, to be honest, I'm, uh, I'm actually writing every horrible thing I've done. I said, these are things I don't want my daughter to know. I swear that 12-year-old took her hands and put them on my cheeks, turned my head towards her, and said, I don't know what you've done, Dad, but I know who you are. You're my hero and I love you. <laughs> Can I get one more of those? <laughs> that changed everything. And you know what came to my mind? That bloody math teacher. Right, up, I'm, I swear. One times one times one times one times one only equals one. I started to get it. I understood it. I no longer looked at the equation to get the answer, I looked within the equation to see the answer. I'm talking about life equation. We all have a life equation. Don't add it up and try to look at the answer. What you want to do is multiply every life experience you've had. If you multiply all those single experiences, what does it equal? One life lesson. That's it. 
It all equals one life lesson. It doesn't matter the good, the bad, the ugly. Whatever has happened in your life, multiply it and you'll grow. You will grow as a person. You will grow as a husband or wife. You will grow as a father, as a mother. You will grow. Multiplication is growth. Now, I didn't just get up here to preach to you. I came up here to give you an answer. Would you like one? Let me tell you how I came about this, because I would be willing to bet that my past is probably the worst one in the room. Thank God nobody agreed. Okay. (laughs) So, what I did is I wrote everything down. I actually wrote a book called Seven Years of Skin. I got rid of that seven years in the book. You don't have to write a book, but if you can, it's a great thing. It really makes you feel good. Here's my book. There's all my bad things in there. I'm good. That's bad. That's not me anymore. It's over there. But what I need you to do, what I would love for you to do is walk away from here tonight. As soon as you get home, I want you to grab a sheet of paper and start writing everything down. It'll only actually take you a few minutes. You'd be surprised. Just point form. Don't get too much detail going on, right? Write point form everything down on a piece of paper. When you've filled that paper, flip it over and write one life lesson. Can you do that? I think you can do that. That's a simple thing, right? Now, here's what I want you to do, because this is what I've been doing for three years flawlessly. And I actually got these words from a friend of mine that's sitting in the audience, and he might remember giving them to me. I take my note, I stick it on the bathroom window, I, or the mirror. I get up in the morning, I look at the mirror, there's my note saying all my bad things. I turn it around, it says one life lesson. I stare in the mirror for 10 seconds into my own eyes. Have you ever done that? It's actually quite scary. <laughs> I stare into my own eyes and I say, good morning, good looking. Let's go get them. It works. You'll laugh at yourself just like you did. I laugh at myself every morning. Oh, I'm dead serious about it, but I I laugh about it. That is such a simple thing to do. It will start to change your mind. And I'm telling you right now, if you keep that up for 66 days in a row, you'll change everything. You will realize that everything that you have been is exactly who you are supposed to be. I want a show of hands to tell me you're going to go home and you're going to write that note. I Most of you are lying, but it felt good. <laughs> Personally, it felt good. Remember, all you got to do, write it down. Backside, you put one life lesson. Don't sleep with anybody else's husband or wife. And look in that mirror and say, good morning, good looking. Let's go get them. Thank you.